G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. As the BBL 13 approaches, I have been endeavouring to do a little bit of a preview on each club uh, franchise, almost as much for me as anything else, as I intend to cover the BBL throughout this summer as we wait for the AFL season to return. So I think I've done the Perth Scorchers and the Melbourne Renegades, as well as a couple of general squad updates already on this channel. And today I'm going to do the Melbourne Stars and just have a little look at, you know, first of all, their squad, having a crack at their best 11, uh, looking at the ins and outs from last year and what we can probably expect for the Melbourne Stars and potentially a good refresher before the season kicks off on December 7th. I intend at this stage to live stream as much as possible depending on how popular they are. So I think I will be doing the first game, which I think is the Brisbane Heat and Melbourne Stars, but I'm going off the top of my head there. So we're going to talk a little bit about the Melbourne Stars. If you are someone who is interested in, well, both footy and cricket and seeing some coverage of the Big Bash League this season, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay, so quickly a snapshot of how last year went. Uh, the Melbourne Stars finished dead last with just three wins and 11 losses. And it, it didn't help that uh, their, arguably their best player in Glenn Maxwell uh, had a hamstring injury last year. But there's been a bit of adversity on that front as well. For a team that finished last, uh, some of their top wicket takers have left the team and their top run scorer as well. So specifically, Luke Wood and Adam Zampa have left. They were the top wicket taker and equal second. Uh, Zampa has gone to the Melbourne Renegades of all teams as well, as has Joe Clark, their top run scorer, the wicket keeper batsman. So there's a little bit of adversity there. Outside of those guys, we did see Coulton Isle had a pretty strong season last year with 16 wickets. On the batting front, there was a little bit left to be desired for sure with Nick Larkin, the only batsman, averaging over 30 last year. There's a new coach this year. We've got Peter Moores taking over from David Hussey. So there's change in the air for sure, which you'd expect from a season that yielded um, you know, last place. So uh, in the previous video, I've done the BBL squads. I think they've been updated subsequently, and so this is the updated thing that I'll flash up on the screen now with a couple of changes, specifically Imad Wasim, who has joined and will play in this tournament from Boxing Day. So on the subject of new signings to this particular team, let's go through them. They've signed Sam Harper from the Melbourne Renegades, They've uh, Joel Paris from Hobart Hurricanes, as well as Scott Boland, although bearing in mind Scott Boland will likely be tied up with the Test Series for Australia, pro uh, provided he gets selected. Mark Steckerty, Harris Ralph from Pakistan, Osama Mir from Pakistan, Pakistan. Then they added uh, Liam Dawson, who I believe was the replacement for Harry Brooks, who they uh, took with the second pick of the draft, who then subsequently pulled out due to uh, workload issues, which is a real blow to the team that had the second pick. Uh, they've replaced him with Liam Dawson from Hampshire. And then Imad Wasim is a, uh, I think he's a bowling all-rounder from memory and a left-arm spinner. So he comes into the team and Liam Dawson's going to be available, I think, for the first three games. So there's going to be a bit of a swap over there, which is a bit of a like-for-like. Like, so that works. In terms of other players they lost, Liam Hatcher went to the Sydney Thunder. We talked about Zampa and Clark joining the Melbourne Renegades. They also lost Trent Bolt from last year's season. Luke Wood, like I said. And uh, the, the player that I've put in as a loss is Harry Brook, who would have been an amazing signing in their top order. And looking at the squad, I think maybe the top order is probably where they lack a little bit compared to some of the other teams. So I've had a quick crack at trying to predict the best 11. This is so difficult to do because you've also got to consider um, availability. Like, do I put Scott Boland in this team even though he's going to be tied up with the Test Series? Uh, either way, I've had a crack. So I've got Tom Rogers and Harper opening the batting, and we, uh, Harper is the wicketkeeper. Glenn Maxwell at first drop. Nick Larkin had a solid season last year. He'll bat at four. And then you've got Stoinis and Cartwright. Liam Dawson, the all-rounder, uh, bats at seven. He's not an amazing play with the bat. At least his record isn't that fantastic in T20. I think his average is about 18. That's off the top of my head. But they do have a number of lower order or bowlers, rather, that can hit, particularly Coulter Nile. We've seen him take games away from teams with the bat before. Osama Mir, Stekati, and Harris Ralph. So just on the availability of some of those players, um, in terms of like game one, Harris Ralph is uh, is going to be tied up apparently with the Pakistan T20 League as well, or T20 Cup, because he is meant to play in the Pakistan series when they play Australia over here this summer. But uh, he has decided to favor the Big Bash League for workload. I suppose it's probably a money thing. Uh, but his availability is subject to the Pakistan Cricket Board a signing a no objection certificate or a clearance and they are taking their time for that. So it looks like Harris Ralph will be available after the first game because that's when the T20 Cup in Pakistan officially ends. There's also a Prime Minister's 11 game, which needs to be considered as well. So that means that Steckerty and Bo Webster as well from this squad will miss the first game of the year. And like I said, Scott Boland uh, will be subject to the test uh, series as well. There is a chance, however, that Boland will be available on December 7th for their first game. I think it's also suggested there's a sneaky chance he's available for their second game on December 9th. So looking at the strength of that, you know, that best 11, what do we think? I mean, 
Probably the strengths include middle order to top order batting, you know, or hitting power in particular with Glenn Maxwell, probably like the form player in Australia right now, particularly for the shorter format. Uh, Obviously, what we saw him do against Afghanistan, what he did in that T20 against India recently, um, he's just been he's just been in unreal form. Uh, In terms of bowling options, they've got plenty. So inside the top seven, obviously Maxwell can bowl. He had he bowled pretty well in the Indian conditions in the in the World Cup, going at a good economy rate. There's Stoinis and Liam Dawson, of course as well so a variety of bowling options in that 11 I've picked I think I've got seven bowling options in that team I do think the fast bowling quality and depth is there obviously Harris Ralph Coulton Isles coming off a good season he's a good player they've got Joel Paris now Steckerty so there's depth there and some options around availability too maybe their batting depth is one possible area obviously it wasn't a strength for them last year but outside the 11 that I've picked only Burns and Webster are probably players that can play in the bot in the top seven of a batting order. Um, Ahmad Wasim might be someone who bats a seven like Dawson, but it's a bit of a shallow batting lineup. So in terms of a uh, outlook for this season, I think any team with Glenn Maxwell in the current form, you have to give him a chance, particularly in a small format. But both with bat and ball, he could be quite effective, but he, the guy's in the form of his life right now. I suppose the only caveat to that is, you know, tiredness and fatigue, because he's had a, he's, he's just played through a World Cup and he played, um, you know, at least one or two T20s over there in India as well before coming home. So uh, you have to give him a chance in, you know, any given game because they've got some match winners doing this as well. Um, I'd say that the bowling depth is good, but batting depth is the, is the vulnerability for them there. What I think is, you know, it's so hard to predict how a T20 squad is going to go because the game is so frenzied and the, the possibility of upsets is there. I mean, we saw a team in the Sydney Thunder who made the finals last year get bowled out for 15 by the team that came second last. So uh, I'm not going to, you know, really predict them to finish last or anything like that. I think they could potentially challenge for the for the four, but ultimately miss because I think there's stronger squads out there. So Anyway, guys, that's just a snapshot of where I think the Melbourne Stars are at going into this season. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. And most importantly, anything that I potentially have missed because uh, I'm trying to scramble a little bit to get this season uh, preview stuff done before it all kicks off on December 7th. But I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoy the content and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.